Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. You know I love that lap song, that smokiness. It's kind of like sitting around a campfire. And this time of season, it's pretty good. I hope you're joining me with a cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, or maybe something harder as I always say. Today is going to be an interesting day. A lot of you absolutely love reviews, unboxings, and whatnot. Hands-on reviews. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to compare contrast a couple of mics. Today we're going to look at the Samore Wave U1. Interesting mic. Um, I was under an NDA so we couldn't release it until the 6th, but you're getting it today. Now, I'm going to compare contrast the Wave U1 with the Samsung C03U that I've had for many years. It is a very good microphone for the price and they're both USB condenser microphones. Now the pickup pattern on them are a little bit different and I'll get into that in just a minute. So before we get into it, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out over at jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. So let's start out with getting into an unboxing and taking a look at this. Now, the packaging itself is extremely nice. It has that Apple feel. When you open it up, it says hello on that really nice translucent stock that looks so cool. It just is packaged nicely. It's not just thrown in there. They paid attention to the details. Now, the manual, as expected, is written in very small six-point or eight-point font or maybe even less basic information. What I'm going to give you here in this video is going to be all that and possibly more. So just hang in there. Now, the weight of the actual stand itself is 4.8 ounces. So it's pretty light, but it's enough to hold this mic up. The reason being is the microphone is pretty light also. Now, what's really interesting is this cord. The cord itself is a USB-C cord, but it has USB converter or adapter built into it, which is nice. And now on the other side of that cord, there is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack so that you can monitor the audio. Now the mic itself has this strange hole dead center of it and I thought that it had some type of use as far as mounting or whatnot and it doesn't. It's purely aesthetic and I really like the aesthetic to be completely honest. Now there's a wheel that goes around that entire hole that allows you to control the volume. Now the microphone, like I said, is extremely light. It comes in at 3.9 ounces. So when we put together the stand and the microphone, we end up with 8.7 ounces altogether. That is super, super light weight. Now that custom cable fits perfectly into the microphone, completely sealing it once inserted. So there's no wiggle room or a way for it to come out. Now in the front of the microphone, you can see a light pattern. This white light basically means that the unit is on. When you rotate that dial clockwise all the way to a maximum setting, that white light would start blinking. That means that you're at 100% audio level. Conversely, if you turn the dial counterclockwise to lower the volume of the mic, once you get to zero, it will start blinking red so that you know that the mic is muted. Now you can also mute the mic easily just simply by tapping on that white ring of light, which is really cool. You tap once, you're muted, you tap again, and it unmutes. That is really good if you're doing some type of gameplay or if you're streaming and you want to mute your mic. Let's say you're coughing or whatever the case might be, it is really nice to have that mute button built right onto the microphone itself. Now, as always, I hate doing specs, but in this case, we really need to because a lot of you guys want to know what the specs are of this mic before you go and put out your hard-earned cash, and I understand that. So starting out with the Samore Wave 1, it's built out of aluminum alloy and ABS. It is a USB condenser microphone. It has a 14 millimeter condenser capsule. Its pickup pattern is cardioid polar, and it has a sensitivity range of negative 38 dB. Its frequency range is from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz, or 20 kilohertz. It will also max out at 48 kilohertz and a bit rate of 24. It does have a USB-C input, and it works with Windows, Android, Mac OS, Linux, PS4, and PS5. Now, the Samsung C03 
U that we're going to compare it to is also built out of aluminum alloy and ABS. It is also a USB condenser microphone where things change is it has dual capsules. So they are 19 millimeter capsules on that mic in comparison to the single 14 millimeter capsule on the Wave U1. Now the pickup pattern, since it has dual capsules, is a super cardioid omni or omnidirectional. Some people call it a bi-directional. And the difference between that bi-directional or omnidirectional means that the microphone is going to pick up equally on the front side of it as well as the back side. Whereas with the Wave U1, it will only pick up going forward. The back side of it will not have any pickup at all and it fades off to the sides. Now the sensitivity on the Samsung C0U was not specified, but it does have a frequency range from all the way down to 20 hertz, just like we saw with the U1 up to 18 kilohertz. Now the U1 is up to 20 kilohertz, so it has a little bit extra on the high end. Now as far as recording, it will max out at 48 kilohertz at 16 bit. Now the U1 does max out at 24 bit. Once again, a little bit more data there. Now the Samsung's input is USB 2 in comparison to USB C, and it does support Mac OS as well as Windows. Now the difference between the Samsung and the Wave U1 is the Samsung has a couple of switches on the outside. One that allows you to turn on or off a low cut filter and a 10 dB or negative 10 dB pad switch. So if you want to turn the audio down a little bit and then later on pick it back up in post-production because things are a little bit too loud and you don't want to fry the upper end where there's no data left, you can put that negative 10 dB pad on. Now what you've been waiting for, of course, is the audio test of this review. And that's what we're going to get into right now. But before I get into it, I want to say that number one, the audio will not be sweetened up at all for both mics. I'm going to show it to you raw. The only thing that I'm going to do is normalize the audio on both. That's it, only normalization. If you don't know what normalization is, basically you're adding in a constant amount of gain up to a certain threshold. Hence, moving that volume up without spiking it over that threshold. So what we do is I'm gonna put a threshold of negative 0.1 or negative 0.2 dB so that they are on par. This will max out the top peaks of the audio on both tracks. So you get an idea of what it sounds like. Now there's going to be, once again, no EQ done at all until the end. I might sweeten them up a little bit just so you can hear what it sounds like after post-production. So since the holiday season is upon us and a lot of you guys celebrate Christmas, I'm going to do a reading so we can do this audio test. The reading is going to be Dr. Seuss. You know I love Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss is how the Grinch stole Christmas. So I'm going to get into that. I'm going to do two readings, one for the Samsung and one for the S'more Wave U1. And we're going to compare the difference and see which one you like better. And I'll let you be the judge. But before I get into the reading, I want Want to make an adjustment here. As you can see, the Wave U1 here is a lot shorter than the Samsung when it's on the stand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a box so that I can place it on the box and it'll be right around the exact same height. This way, neither of the mics have any advantage. I think that is a fair representation right here. So let's get right into this reading. Now, the first reading is going to be with the S'more. Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask me why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right, it could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. Whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he still stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the Who's. That was the S'more Wave 1, and now we're going to switch over to the Samsung. Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north 
of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask me why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could perhaps be his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. Whatever the reason his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas hating the Who's. So that was the Samsung C03U. So which one did you like out of the two? Am I rhyming now? Like Dr. Seuss? Oh my God. Anyways, I'm going to play for you back one of the takes, but I'm going to do it from the Rode shotgun mic. So you can hear the difference. Once again, this is apples to oranges, not apples to apples, but this way you'll get an idea of what they sound like between the three of them, the Rode shotgun mic and the two USB condenser mics. Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask me why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right, it could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. Whatever the reason his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the Who's. Now what I found between both of these mics that they all do the same was they lower the amount of the bass. With the Samore they keep it at zero dB. With the Samsung they drop it back just a little bit under that, maybe negative two dB, as a way I believe to reduce some of the rumble, any type of hitting or movements or whatnot. And they both do the exact same on the high end. Once you hit about 5,000 to 7,000 K, they bump it up to about eight dB. So you see a gradual increase when it gets to the mids and the highs with a bump right around five to seven kilohertz, right around that area. And that's basically to brighten up the audio. And by moving that bass down just a bit without actually putting a shelf in, what ends up happening is, is you lose some of that muddiness, which is on the lower end where most voices do not register anyways. That muddiness usually comes from electrical devices or hums and whatnot, from lights or whatever's in the area. So they take that out. So what I would suggest and what I'm going to do is to add a little bit more brightness at the top, but also bump up the bass because the bass, once again, is lowered. So you're going to reduce some of it. And by the looks of the pattern on both of these mics, I believe that the Samore is doing a little bit more on the high end, is trying to sharpen things up a little bit. And we might hear that in the raw, just normalized audio. So let me go and play these back again but with the audio sweetened up just a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit low end and I'm gonna add a little bit on the high end, reduce some here and there, but nothing drastic, something that any of you can do with any post-production package. I'm gonna do all of these corrections right in DaVinci Resolve. So once again, anyone can do this and you could even use a free piece of software like Audacity. Download that, maybe I'll put a link in the comment below or in the description below also. So check that out. Once again, that is free. So let's listen to the first one all over again. This is the Samore Wave U1 sweetened up a little bit. Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask me why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right, it could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. Whatever the reason his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the Who's. And now let's listen to the Samsung C03U once again sweetened up just slightly. Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask me why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right, it could perhaps be his shoes were too tight, but I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. Whatever the reason his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas hating the Who's. What do you think about these two mics? I really like them both. I like the sound. The sound is slightly different between the two of them. 
I like them both for different reasons. I feel like the Samsung has a little bit more deeper bassiness to it, and you need to add a little bit more highs to get it to be a little bit more crisp, let's say, brightened up. Whereas with the Samor, the Wave U1 really cuts through the noise, let's say, or audio. So I think this is a really good mic if you're going to be using it for let's say streaming, let's say you're a gamer, put this up on a stand somewhere and use this because it will definitely cut through your audio because it is that bright and sharp and clean. Now, a couple of things here that I'd like to suggest. Number one, the microphone itself is really small and very lightweight. Like I said, it's about eight and a half, 8.7 ounces, really light. The issue with that is, is when you put it on a desk, and you do not have like this massive thing here, right? Where you have something that's sitting here on a shock mount, so you don't end up getting any of the vibrations that happen on the desk itself, you end up with some problems, okay? I would say is to offer this microphone with some type of shock mount. Maybe it's a little bit more expensive, maybe it's a buy extra after the fact type of thing, but I think that would be really, really good. The other thing that you could do is unscrew the mic and then screw it into a stand or a mic arm and use it that way. And then the mic arm is away from the desk and then you won't hear any type of thumps or whatnot from it. The other thing that I like about it that we didn't talk about that we really should have is this right here. This has this three millimeter headphone jack in it. What's really good about this in comparison with the Samsung is I can plug in a set of earphones there and now listen to the audio, not just the audio coming out of the mic itself, but also the audio, my game audio, let's say. And now you don't have to have two different inputs. It's literally right connected to the mic itself. Now, being that it's here on the desk, it works out fine. I can put on a pair of headphones, plug them in and listen, which is no problem. But if I was to put this on an arm somewhere up here, well, I'm not gonna have a cord coming down here right through my video doesn't make a lot of sense. At that point, I would just monitor it through a different pair of headphones stuck right into the PC itself or onto the Mac, either which way. But I like that they gave you these options, which I think is really good. The other thing we talked about earlier was this button right here. Not only do we turn this to lower the volume or to raise the volume, just simply by tapping it, it goes red. This means that we are now muted. Once again, really good if you're streaming you're doing like some type of gameplay and you want to mute your mic because you're coughing or you're swearing because you just lost. <laughs> and then you just click it again and now it goes white and you know that you're back on, so to speak, you're live. That is really good. Having some type of mute button is really valuable. When I used to do a lot of podcasting with Trevor Kern, when we used to do Digital Photography Cafe, if you were doing a podcast, you always wanted that mute button close by. So if for some happened, you sneeze or you're ready to cough, you just smack it and you know that it's not going to go through the live feed. It is really powerful in comparison to what a lot of people do is they're looking around for where their mute is on the computer. Not so good. Once again, having it right here, just tapping it going red, you know, just by visibly looking at it, you are now off, tap it again and you're back on. That is super cool. I like that a lot. So the only two things that I can see that I would like to see change is number one, I would like to see some type of offering of a shock mount. I think that would be very, very valuable. And I think a lot of people would buy it once you start moving around and listening to your desk. Now, matter of fact, what I'm going to do before we go here, I'm gonna give you an example of what keystrokes sound like. So let me go and turn on the Samore Wave 1. So now this is what the keystrokes sound like. All right, now I'm gonna turn that off and I'm gonna turn on the Samsung, the C03U. Now listen. There you go. So you can tell that there's a difference between the two. Bear in mind also, like I said, this is a cardioid, but it is a dual capsule. This right here has a capsule coming out the front as well as the back. So it is a omnidirectional or a bi-directional. It records everything going forward as well as backwards and then tapers off on the side. In comparison to this mic, where it has absolutely no input on the back side at all, it only has one capsule, 
It records straight on and then it dissipates going off to the side so that you're not getting any of that background sound behind it. Whereas with this, you're going to get all of the room noise, all of the ambient. So if you like ambient, then a bi or an omnidirectional type of pickup is the way you want to go. If you want to get just yourself, just like a shotgun mic that's pointed directly at your mouth, you're going to get something like this. So while there's positives and negatives to both, I mean, I think that they are both really, really good. Now, when it comes to price, I can't tell you what it is. The reason being is I'm recording this before it actually goes live. So down below in the comments, as well as in the description, I'm going to put the price and I'm also going to put a link. That link will go over to my Amazon shop. So if you want to pick it up, please use that and I will get 50 cents. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't want to use it, don't use it. It's okay. You'll be able to pick these up, I believe, at B&H, at Adorama. You can pick them up, of course, Amazon Prime, get it overnight. What do you think? Which one do you like better? And for the price, look down below. What do you think about this mic? I honestly think this is super cool. And the sound of it, I don't know. I mean, I think that it sounds every bit as good as this Rode shotgun mic that we're using right now, number one. And it is so small and out of the way. I mean, I can literally leave this on my table and do this type of video with you and you wouldn't even know that it's sitting in front of me because it is that small. And maybe we can get a little shock mount or maybe the guys over there at Small Rigs, listen to me, and make a little shock mount for this because I think that it can use it. I notice that if I have it on the desk itself, as is, and I start hitting the desk a little bit or moving around, there is that movement of the capsule and you can hear that hum and that kind of bounce, which doesn't sound good. So if you're gaming, you're hitting things, you're moving around, tapping your keys and all this stuff, you probably don't want it just sitting on your desk. You're gonna either wanna put it on an arm and not use the headphone jack on it, like we were talking about earlier, or you're gonna to have to somehow deaden the sound using a shock mount. So anyways, like I said, what do you guys think? Once again, take a look in the comments below for that link as well as the price. And, and if you enjoy this even a little bit, please give this video a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, wherever. We're trying to grow this channel and things have been really rough the last month. It kind of gets me down a little bit because things have just slowed down a lot. I don't know if it's because of photography has just been fizzling out. There's not a lot of stuff out there. It's hard for me to do coverage on stuff that just doesn't exist. And when it does, it's just another lens or whatnot. So I like doing this. And if you guys like this type of stuff, as well as my Starlink coverage and all the rest of that stuff, let me know. I'm kind of looking at just changing things around a little bit or maybe adding to the channel. So it's not just photography. As we can see, photography is just dying on the vine. And hopefully, hopefully, a new season, a new springtime will come and we're going to see growth again. But as of right now, there's not a lot going on, making it hard for the channel. So once again, share this with friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, wherever. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Click this little button over here so when I go live or a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you've already clicked this and it's not working, you're not being notified when new videos come out, Uncheck it, unclick it, click it again, then click all. And the folks over there at YouTube said that it should help. So please do that. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and be prepared.